Hi, today we have uh, Claire Fitzpatrick. She's from our biomedical engineering department. So Claire, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself? Sure, I'm an assistant professor in mechanical and biomedical engineering. I've been at Boise State since 2016 now, uh, so I'm in my fourth year. Uh, and I'm originally from Ireland, but then spent quite a while in uh, Colorado at the University of Denver before moving to Boise. Well, that's great. It's good to have you here. So can you tell me what's beneficial about our MBE program at Boise State? I think uh, what I really like is the, the flexibility of that program. Um, and also there are really good opportunities for undergrads to get experiential learning. So that's, you know, doing internships. Uh, we have a lot of undergrad students that come through the lab and so they work in the lab either, you know, as employees where we're paying them or they're on some sort of, uh, so, uh, we also have a, a three credit research internship where you can actually come work in a lab, uh, count that credit towards your degree. So there's a lot of ways to, to get involved. So, um, and also I think we have got a really good bunch of faculty and and instructors, so yeah. That's great, and that was a great intro to uh, the lab. So can you tell me a little bit about what you do in your lab? Sure, so I run the computational biosciences lab. So we develop computational models, so a lot of finite element simulations as well as some other tools to better understand uh, mechanisms of injury and disease. So we do things like uh, use our models to understand what might be the best surgery for a specific person or understand, uh, put some, some science, put some engineering behind, you know, how do we improve different types of biomedical devices so that they're going to perform the best for a particular in, in, individual. Um, a couple of the main pro, uh, projects that we have going on are, are focusing on understanding the mechanisms of osteoarthritis and how we can do a better job of predicting uh, who has that, how it's going to progress, longitudinal, uh, longitudinal change over time, um, as well as things like understanding joint stability and how does the musculoskeletal system change as we age. Oh, wow. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, probably, so I, I, I would say maybe 15 years altogether. So maybe the, the four, four or so years of my PhD was more looking at statistical shape analysis, but then uh, postdoc uh, was really focused on computational modeling. So maybe I've been doing that for uh, a dozen years, 11 or 12 years. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And so can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, I keep hearing that you were one of the creatives, creators of our biomic, uh, biomedical PhD program. Can you tell us a little bit about the passion behind that and how you got that started? And um, well, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, really, it came out of a, a need. Uh, so there's a, both a, a student need and a student interest, um, as well as a faculty need. And so on the student side, we have a, a minor, a biomedical engineering minor program that's very popular. We have typically about 100 students enrolled in the program. So our students are really interested in biomedical engineering. Um, but we didn't have a, a PhD program that was a great fit for those students that were interested in going on to grad school. So there was a definite need on the student side. Uh, there was also interest from the local community. So our local hospitals, St. Luke's and St. Al's, as well as some local industries uh, that would definitely benefit from that, you know, that skilled population coming out of the program. Um, and then on the faculty side, uh, there were a faculty in, in our department, mechanical and biomedical engineering, um, kinesiology, as well as faculty all over, over campus. So, you know, electrical and computer science, um, biology, uh, physics, um, and material science. So a lot of different, uh, different, different researchers from uh, different colleges, different departments. And this really provides a venue where we can integrate a little bit more and, and you know, get, learn more about what each other are doing and, and hopefully use that to develop uh, new research projects that we otherwise might not have. Oh, that's great. And this is an additional question that I didn't, uh, uh, but I just want to know, where do you see our PhD program 10 years from now? Um, I, I think we should be in a, you know, we've, we've, I think we've had a pretty strong start. Uh, we yeah. have had a lot of great students in the program right now. We have uh, faculty are starting to get grants that they're using to fund students, uh, which is, is really great to see. 
So I think, you know, I, I think we're going to see growth in that program. I think it's going to be, um, you know, it might never be a massive, a, a large, a large scale program, but I think it will be a, like a core high quality program um, over the next five or 10 years. And I'm, I'm very excited to, to see where it goes. That's exciting. And so do you have anything additional for uh, the Bronco Day students? Uh, just to let students know that it is really easy to get involved in research at the undergrad level. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, you know, feel free to, to talk to students that are working in the labs, figure out what's a good fit for you. Um, faculty have job announcements that pop up where they're looking for, you know, motivated undergrads. So absolutely keep an eye out for those. Go, go talk to faculty, go talk to students working in those labs and and figure out what could potentially be a good fit for you. There's absolutely no harm in, in trying it out for a semester and seeing if it if it's something that that you know you enjoy and you want to do more of. That's great. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to me today. So thank you and go Broncos. Yeah, absolutely, go Broncos. <laughs>